Well, in a few days, and you'll see it here on Fox, Joe Biden is going to formally accept his party's presidential nomination. At the same time, alone in her apartment speaking to the mirror, Governor Stacey Abrams of Georgia will do the very same thing. And she wants to thank you for the unprecedented level of support she received. She looks forward to running this country. Now, Abrams will not be allowed to say that from the stage of the DNC, of course. Party leaders won't let her do that. The whole point of a convention is to highlight a party's most popular positions while keeping its crazies hidden from public view. But what if suddenly everyone in the party goes crazy? What if there are no sane people left? Well, then you get what we're seeing right now. Democrats have spent the last week outlining a conspiracy so wicked, so brazen and dangerous, it makes Russiagate look like jaywalking. According to elected Democrats and the news media they control, the president of the United States is working to eliminate the U.S. mail. Now, Trump isn't closing the post office. That would require an amendment to the Constitution. No, it's far worse than that and much sneakier. Trump is stealing the mailboxes, driving through Democratic neighborhoods in the middle of the night, tossing them in the back of his station wagon, cackling like the madman he is, or having his lackeys do it. Either way, the effect is the same. With no mailboxes, Democrats won't be able to vote. Donald Trump is stealing the election. And here's the thing. Democrats can't call to complain about it. It turns out that someone took all the payphones too. Can you imagine? Apparently, Joe Biden read all about this on Facebook or some website whose name he can't remember, but it was all there. Biden was so upset he almost snarfed his Metamucil. He was still ranting about it during a virtual fundraiser on Friday as he told the crowd, quote, they're going around literally with tractor trailers picking up mailboxes. You ought to go online and check out what they're doing in Oregon. I mean, it's bizarre. Got that? Literally with tractor trailers in Oregon. The funny thing is, Oregon hasn't voted for a Republican in a presidential election in more than 35 years, and it definitely won't this year, mailboxes or not. So it's unclear what exactly Trump might be gaining from taking Oregon's mailboxes. But whatever, it's just wrong. Former Vice President Al Gore, who increasingly looks like a wax effigy of himself, went on CNN the other day to make that point. By tampering with the Postal Service, he is, in effect, putting his knee uh, on the neck of American democracy. Stealing mailboxes, says Al Gore, is nothing less than Trump putting his knee on the neck of democracy. The blood is draining from America's face. We are fast losing consciousness. As you can imagine, this caught the media's attention. Without pausing to see if it was true, they rushed to their cameras to repeat it. Essential sorting machines removed, blue mailboxes literally hauled away on flatbed trucks. Mailboxes being picked up and stacked up. What's that about other than voter suppression? They're seeing some of their mailboxes in their communities uprooted. Uh, that's a problem. People are worried about the post office. You know, you're seeing, you know, uh, the mailboxes being taken away. Can we vote? What's going on? The removal of uh, mailboxes, uh, the removal of equipment within the postal offices and the rest is to undermine the postal service at a time when the postal services need it now more than ever. Are you listening to this? They're literally hauling away mailboxes on flatbed trucks. And Phil Rucker of the Washington Post, for one, is not going to stand for it. Phil Rucker of the Washington Post thinks that disappearing mailboxes are a major problem. His boss, Nancy Pelosi, agrees with that. But since Pelosi is the Speaker of the House and not a hack reporter at Jeff Bezos' daily newspaper, Pelosi can actually do something about it. That's why she's in charge and not Phil Rucker. Pelosi announced that she's calling back the Congress from summer vacation to deal with this. Pelosi said it is time for a legislative branch to save democracy from Donald Trump, whom she announced is trying to, quote, sabotage the election by manipulating the Postal Service. And by the way, it's not just the election. Trump is also trying to starve old people whom he hates despite being one. With no Postal Service, Pelosi said seniors may not be able to get their Social Security checks in the mail. Now, Nancy Pelosi is 80 years old, so you'd think she'd know that the government hasn't used the Postal Service to send those checks since 2013. Ah, oh, in other words, we can now be pretty sure that Nancy Pelosi doesn't live on her Social Security benefits or even notice them. But don't tell the rest of the House Democrats. They are riled up. Some have called for the FBI to investigate the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy. And not long after they said that, their militia showed up outside DeJoy's house.
this is a big story. So the question is, who is stealing all those mailboxes? And it's actually an interesting tale if you get into the details of it. Consider a recent tweet from New Jersey Congresswoman Mickey Sherrill, who might not be the smartest member of Congress. Sherrill posted a photograph yesterday of a truck filled with mailboxes. The Postal Service, she wrote, is being, quote, systematically dismantled here in New Jersey and around the country. Then a few hours later, Mickey Sherrill wrote this, quote, at least one post office box has been replaced. We'll continue to provide more information as we have it. Hear that? More information as we have it. Mickey Sherrill is like her own 24-hour news service. And just like CNN, Cheryl didn't bother to check her facts before going on air. By contrast, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice did do some reporting on the subject, and we laud her for that. Rice checked with actress Mia Farrow, and actress Mia Farrow claimed that mailboxes were being removed to disenfranchise Democratic voters, so Susan Rice tweeted that. Susan Rice's tweet was shared by more than 30,000 people. A lot of Americans saw it. Now, it was totally false, but it's still up. Rice is not a Republican, so Twitter is fine with that. No violation of their terms. As a matter of fact, and we try to stick to facts, nobody is stealing America's mailboxes. This is another hoax. It's another lie. It was totally made up in order to manipulate you. The post office moves mailboxes as a matter of course and has for many years. Donald Trump did not order this. It is normal. A 2017 report from the USPS Inspector General, for example, notes that the Postal Service has removed 14,000 mailboxes over the preceding five years. This has been going on since at least 2009. And 2009 was the same year, by the way, that Barack Obama, who presided over this horrific mass mailbox removal, delivered the following assessment of the U.S. mail. People say, well, how can a private company compete against the government? If you think about it, uh, you know, UPS and FedEx are doing just fine, right? The, the uh, no, they are. I mean, it's it's the post office that's always having problems. Wait, what? Did you hear that? Talk about an unexpected twist, ladies and gentlemen. The great mailbox conspiracy of 2020 turns out to be bigger and more complex than we realized. Barack Obama is in on it too. Don't tell Susan Rice. So, what is this really about in real life? Well, last week, the president refused to hand over $3.5 billion to the Postal Service in recent stimulus negotiations. That was money that would go toward mail-in voting. This is what they're mad about. That was a blow to one of Nancy Pelosi's top priorities. Democrats favor mail-in voting. Democrats favor any form of voting that does not entail actual voters going to actual polling places. They refer to this as, quote, ballot access, like it's a civil rights issue. It is not a civil rights issue. Votes cast by mail are easier to tamper with. The identities of the voters who cast them are harder to verify. Mail-in voting makes voter fraud easier. That's why we haven't had a lot of it throughout American history, and that's why Democrats are for it. And we have seen fraud. There's no mail-in voter fraud. That's a lie. Just in the past few months, for example, a postal worker in West Virginia pleaded guilty to altering mail-in ballots. Four men in New Jersey stand accused of fraud after the USPS found hundreds of ballots in a single mailbox in a local city council election. In Clark County, Nevada, more than 200,000 mail-in votes from the recent primary election have been declared undeliverable. Those are local and statewide elections. Imagine this on a national scale during a presidential election. Imagine it magnified across 50 states. What would be the effect of that? Well, there would be no way to assure the integrity of the presidential election. Oh, right. That's precisely the point. In July, the Boston Globe described how a group of Biden operatives, including John Podesta, had a secret war game in which they gamed out the presidential election this fall. Here's how the Boston Globe described one scenario in which Podesta took Biden's role. Quote, Mr. Podesta playing Mr. Biden shocked the organizers by saying he felt his party wouldn't let him concede. Alleging voter suppression, he persuaded the governors of Wisconsin and Michigan to send pro-Biden electors to the Electoral College. Oh, not crazy. Both Democratic governors. Eventually, in the scenario that Podesta outlined at the war games, Americans, quote, stopped looking to the media for cues and waited to see what the military would do, end quote. So John Podesta is gaming out how the United States military can put Joe Biden in office. And that tells you a lot about how Democrats are thinking about this election. 
making up bizarre stories about how Donald Trump steals mailboxes may be ludicrous. But stories like that make America even more paranoid and fearful than it already is. And that's the point. Stories like this prepare voters for the day that the Democrats call in the generals to make Joe Biden president.